So we left you last week at El Badazu something beach and we've just driven just half an hour, it's just half an hour since we finished the last video uh, down the road to Walidia. Um, the plan was to take a couple of days off here and not film but uh, as we're driving down the hill into town um, our engine has cut out and we are stranded on the hill not a good time just a few days until we're supposed to be crossing back into europe can't start the engine it's just turning over um steve's just got in there now and had a look under the bonnet it looks like we've got no coolant it's just a hose has come off and the coolant was just pulled out everywhere just gone to fill the coolant back up it's just running out the other side so um yeah happy camper running hey eh? keeping it real Hello and welcome back. I'm Kath. And I'm Stuart. And this, this is Nala. Nala. In December, we left South Wales on an epic road trip to Morocco. Join us as we attempt to take our home on wheels from mountains to deserts and everything else in between. Getting off the beaten track to show you the real Morocco. To get the hose back on. I have. It's no longer pouring out. Okay, this is good. This weather's going to start again now. Yep. How long we've been running without coolant. Uh. And now a load of sheep have come to join us as well. <laughs> Standard Morocco, eh? Sheep and goats. Oh, they're cute. The dog's going to bark at these guys now, no doubt. <laughs> Look at this guy. What a cute coat. <laughs> it's okay. See it bubbling. Yep. Bon sure. <laughs> Lovely view though, eh? To all the people who've said how calm and collected we've been, no matter what we faced all trip, that may be about to be challenged to the max. <laughs> Oh, we're causing a traffic jam as well, but there's nothing to do really. Uh, yeah, they're digging a channel here, which is taking up a big chunk of the road, and then we're stuck in the road as well. So, yeah, you can probably see just here where they've just dug. They're obviously digging for pipes or whatever. So, yeah, it's already narrowed the road by about a third, and then we're just stuck as well. So, but yeah, nothing we can do about it. No breakdown service in Morocco. Fingers crossed, eh? And that's the sound of coolant boiling. So they leave it to cool down whatever we do. No. I don't like it when you're quiet. No. Well, there was no. There was no warning. indication, was, was there? Low. No. I only checked it a couple of days ago. When yeah. We were at, um, no like indication we were overheating there, was there? No, no lights come on. It's definitely like overheating there. That's not an OE tank. So I'm guessing that the. Uh, oh, where you replaced the coolant tank last year? Yeah, I'm guessing the sensor doesn't work then. Is this a lesson in why Mercedes parts are so expensive? Yeah. <laughs> be a very expensive lesson. Yeah. <sighs> 
Uh, I feel like it's not our week this week. It seems like a really good time to talk about travel fatigue. Try again. <laughs> So last week I had a bout of food poisoning and then we've just had a couple of like up and down travel days and then Stu come down with a really heavy cold. I've also now got that really heavy cold. I've had another upset stomach and the last couple of days I think we both really be feeling like the fatigue is real. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Right, let's get the van off out yeah. of the middle of the road. Right, we're going to try and move this van then. Just rolling it down the hill a little bit and tucking ourselves in so we're not in the way so much. I mean, thankfully we are in, on a hill, but obviously we don't want to lose the hill in case we have to need the roll to start the van because uh, it's a bit heavy to be pushing. <laughs> I have nothing. Anyway, like I was saying about travel fatigue, we realised how lucky and privileged we are to be able to take a trip like this. It really has been amazing. We're in our 12th week of travel now, um, and this week has just been a particularly tricky one. So I think we're both, our minds are on things at home as well. And then about a week ago, um, I got about a food poisoning, which just wiped me out for about two days. Uh, and then, a few days later, I had another day of just having a really upset stomach. Stu came down with a cold, which just made him feel really rotten. Now I've got that cold as well. Um, and yeah, we're both feeling a bit fried this week, I think. And then... Really, really fatigued, really tired. Um, yeah, um, we're, we're not complaining, obviously. We are really, really lucky to be able to do a trip like this. But I'm also working full time on the road. Stuart's working editing YouTube videos. Um, it's fun, but it's also a lot to do every day moving on finding park hubs so yeah we don't want to complain because we really have loved the whole trip overall and we're definitely not complaining but um i think a, a lot of people long-term travel probably don't talk enough about the fatigue and how you can feel you just don't want to feel like you're moaning because like we are literally living the dream but yeah sometimes sometimes you just want to wake up <laughs> so obviously now today we're on a hill like this. <laughs> um, the engine just cut out, no warning at all, no overheating warning, no coolant issue warning, nothing. The engine just died, just cut out like it like still felt like it stalled, went to start the engine again, it's just turning over. It's not making a good sound, it's a really big rattly sound. So um, yeah, we've just, uh, he's put the hose back on where it's come back out and oh, we'll see what happens now, I guess fingers crossed obviously we'll keep you updated yeah uh, this video might be about finding mechanics in Morocco <laughs> oh, I do wish we weren't on a hill the view's cracking though Steam is not a good look. Well, we're going again. I'm covered in bloody coolant, but we're going again. So, it, for some reason, I don't know why, it's one of the big pipes has come off the bottom, so it's dumped the coolant everywhere. Um, I felt something wasn't quite right, which is why I stopped at the top of the hill um, as soon as we came off the main road. Uh, to turn it off and turn it on again, just in case it was in limp <laughs> mode. Uh, yeah, and the bugger wouldn't start at all. Um, I've put the pipe back on, but I'm going to have to get out and check it again just to make sure um, it's not a Jubilee clip or it's not even one of those funny clamp clips. It's just a, a bit of metal around it. It's bizarre, I don't know. But I want to get under and have a proper look in a bit. Um, but for the time being, I brought 10 litres of coolant and I've just used them all. Um, a lot of it came out when I first poured it back in because I didn't realise the pipe was off but yeah 10 litres of coolant done um, we're now full and it started first time sounds fine seems to drive fine keep fingers crossed the coolant isn't showing a temperature on the computer which makes me think there's a, an issue with one of the sensors but I think we're just going to have to keep an eye on it and uh, yeah fingers crossed 5,000 
877 miles since we left and it hasn't missed a beat so it's only a matter of time I guess. Well hopefully that's all that sorted without too much trouble. Steve's just checking under the engine now that we're in an actual car park uh, and just topping that up with a bit more water as well so fingers crossed that won't be too much of a disaster so yeah uh, the stuff about the fatigue is real though I just want to crawl into bed to be honest but it's stinking cold uh, yeah anyway uh, yeah so we're both in a bit of a well oh, today decision paralysis but uh, we've just pulled up in this car, car park well Lydia looks absolutely beautiful so I think we're just gonna have a walk and clear our heads and then hopefully the rest of the day will become a bit clearer and fingers crossed that hose stays on and yeah it won't be too much of a problem well, stress aside, well, Lydia is absolutely beautiful. What a gorgeous little seaside town. All these little villas on the seafront and then a coastal lagoon too. Oh, a bloody bin! Yeah. Loads of bins! Seaside town. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's gorgeous here. We've been to loads of seaside towns, none of them have had bins. Nice. <laughs> My head's a shed at the moment. Yeah, uh, just to walk and clear our heads yeah. now and then hopefully. Keep fingers things crossed, will... we're a long way from home. Yeah. What a lovely town. Just trying to decide what to do now. So we stay here and book into the campsite and stay the night. There's not a lot here, apart from a pretty beach and lagoon. Um, or do we move a little bit further to Casablanca in case we need a mechanic where we've got the name of one. It's hard to know what to do. If you want a dippy, you do it in the lagoon because I'm not thinking you do it out there. It's like a washing machine, and it's clear that you'd go from being like ankle deep to up to your waist in a single wave as well. That sea is fierce. What a beautiful big coastline! Woo! <laughs> decision made, darling. Yeah, decision made. We'll carry on. I just fancy getting somewhere that's a little less remote just in case there are uh, further issues with the van until I've driven it now I'm a little bit nervous so just have to see what happens what will be will be we will definitely be aiming to come back to this place though when we visit Morocco again because this is stunning really really lovely little seaside town so yeah we'll uh, we'll tag where we just parked there's Guardian parking over there, it's just 5 dirham but you can't stay overnight so we'll tag the campsite as well that we were planning to stay at if we stayed. We won't be able to guarantee facilities as we haven't stayed there ourselves but we'll add it to our map anyway. And of course as always you can find all the locations at vannavigation.com Well, that's a couple of big fish that he's filleting. As usual, we have no idea what we're buying. He just tells us that they're delicious. And we've also bought some, oh, what's it called? Gambo? Gambon? Gambas. Gambas, which is the French word for prawns, which I've learned this trip. I've learned more French on this trip than I've learned on anywhere, even in all my French lessons. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there you go, that's our dinner tonight. Yeah, I saw that one. That's way before Casablanca, and it's yeah. just on this bit of coast. I that's don't the think only that other works, got, really. So we're not yeah. missing any pins. No, out. no, and that's before Al Jadida, isn't it? Yeah. But I think we'd be better off being closer to Casablanca in case yeah. we get a problem with the van. So if we go to what's that, Le Ocean Blue, yeah. and then that's the other side of Casablanca, and it's near to Mohammed, Mohammedin, Mohammedia, <laughs> Mohammedia, Mohammed, Mah 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 Mah
Mohammedia. It is. Look, it's like Mohammed, but he's got a really media. good media system. Yeah. Sorry to any Muslims I offended with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mohammedia. That's that's how you pronounce that, surely. Yeah. So it's just the other side, isn't it? So we can restock there. We've got to do some washing. Oh, we definitely need some washing. Is now covered in coolant. Yep. Um, and then we hopefully we can get some washing done there, and then maybe we can pop into Mohammedia as well. Yep, find yeah, find a shop find a shop yeah we definitely need to find a shop we got dinner for tonight but that's about it right yeah Plan we made. could spread today's food out for two days and have the fish tonight in the prawns tomorrow if you want there's not enough prawns for a meal there we, there would be if you did them with like rice and things maybe we got no rice either see now i eat prawns there's no rice left <laughs> anyway we haven't even got enough for a meal we really oh, need some you. shopping all right then cool is that a plan then that is a plan that's a big drive today though, camping over the ocean two hours. Yeah. should we do an hour and then check the cool and, and well, yeah i'll keep an eye on the uh yeah. Computer, see what the temperature says. Okay, then. Excellent. Cool. This is made. Plan made. So we're on our first Moroccan toll road, and the minute we've pulled on, we've had to pull over because we've lost all our coolant again. So you can see it on the coolant sensor on the dash controls that it's clearly overheating. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what we can do really, but limp on to Casablanca and use this garage that we've been recommended. Uh, we're all out of coolant anyway now, so Stu's just checking whether the pipes come off again or whether we've just burnt through all the coolant. Um, I'm not going to go and shut the camera in his face because I think he's been a bit stressed out, but that's where we are anyway. The pipes come off again. That's broken. Oh yeah. So do you think that's what's causing the whole issue or do you think pressure has made that break? No, I think that's cracked. And then that's why we're losing the pipe. It's... Well, that's a good thing, though, surely. Potentially, cause... yeah. Okay. So, so it looks like the clip that holds that pipe on has actually just sheared all the way through and come off, which is fingers crossed could be good because that indicates that it isn't a thermostat issue, but it is just an issue with the fact that it won't hold coolant in. But yeah, who knows? No, I, really cool. no, I, I know. Cool. I no. So that's, yeah. all the way yeah. through, hasn't it? Well, that's the problem. Yeah, okay. So as long as we can fill it up, I mean at the moment, the only coolant I can see that we've lost is everything from the tank down. There's still coolant in the bottom. In the engine, so okay. I'll add water. Um, but yeah, I'll have to put that clamp back on. Yeah. And get into it, it's a pain in the ass. So. Oh, here we go again, Because I need to check yeah. the tube leaflet so. Nope. There you go. We've got some cute Ghibli gift clips in the booth, so Stu's just gone to see if he can find one that will fit. <laughs> Fingers crossed again. But you're loving this video, aren't you? Really great look around Morocco. Just get to see us having van problems. <laughs> I think we're both feeling a bit better than we were this morning. I'm just feeling really rough, and it just makes everything seem ten times worse. I just want to call into bed, to be honest. I've just been really snotty and banged up the last couple of days, but today I feel, I do feel really unwell actually. Uh, but yeah, soldier on we must, eh? Still living our dream though, wouldn't change it for anything. <coughs> Putting the van up on the curb so you can get underneath it yeah, with exactly your jubilee that. clip. Exactly that. I didn't ask him because I'm not talking to him, just leaving him to it. But he's got a big Jubilee clip in his hand, so I'm hoping this will hold the pipe on. All right, whilst well, Stu's under the bonnet, sorting that out, or he's actually under the whole van. Um, we'll just talk about Moroccan toll road, shall we? So, uh, obviously, we all have this idea about toll roads that is set by French ones, where we're all terrified to get on them because it costs an absolute fortune. But if you're in Morocco, it's pointless trying to avoid the toll roads. This is the first one we've been on, but that's mainly because we've stayed off the beaten track. But if you want to go somewhere directly, get on the toll roads. Driving distances in Morocco are just insane. Google will tell you something's two and a half hours. It'll take you four and a half. Um, the road network here is it's good. It's improving all the time. If you stay on the end roads, they're excellent. The toll roads are really good. But once you're off the beaten track, it's really, really difficult. So, so if you find yourself being directed onto a toll road in Morocco, don't try and avoid it. It's pointless. It'll just add so much time and money onto your journey. And the tolls here are really cheap. They're set up in a way that Moroccans can afford them 
so I think the longest stretch on a previous visit I've done is Marrakesh to Agadir and I think it's about eight pound um, and it's a three hour drive so it's just pointless trying to avoid them it is not France you don't need to worry the toll roads are completely affordable so. I assume Stu's put that jub Jubilee clip on there because he's just pouring some water in. Uh, we're all out, we're all out of coolant now. He's put 10 litres in. It's just all pissed at the bottom of the engine again. Excuse my French, but well, it's just been one of those days, hasn't it? <laughs> And you know, everyone's been so great and all the comments and things have said about how we take things in our stride and how easy we make it look and how easy we make travel look. And I've been sitting here and I've been agonising about leaving the bit in, about travel fatigue and should I have filmed that bit and like when I had food poisoning last week we didn't put it in the video because we want to stay upbeat and positive and we want you to enjoy the content but... <sighs> We're just going to keep it real. It can't be great all the time. It can't be ideal all the time. There's going to be some bad days. It's just the way it is. This is our 12th week on the road and things are going to happen while you're on the road. Um, you're going to have ups and downs and you're going to have days where you just feel like shit and you want to crawl into bed. So that's me today. Um, so yeah, we're keeping it real. We're going to keep all that in, I think. Put the water in where the coolant should be and it's literally boiling um yeah it's not good need to sort this out now because whether it's just a pipe or not obviously the engine overheating all the time is just not good for the engine uh we've done nearly six thousand miles this trip and like Steve's been in this van four years and I've been in it with him for two years and it's never missed a beat this it's so reliable all that stuff you hear about oh don't buy a sprinter da, 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 da. they're brilliant the engines are absolutely fantastic on them yes sometimes they get a bit of rust issues we've got some rust on the back door we're probably gonna have to replace the whole door but this has been such a reliable van it really is our trusty steed and it's what you want if it's your home oh, that fingers crossed again <laughs> <laughs> oh. All for one little bit of metal that's, uh, yeah, it's cracked and given up the ghost. I don't know if that's age or, or what it is, but the metal's just cracked. I'll keep hold of it just in case. It's got a part number on, so that'll be helpful for Merck when I uh, go and see him. But the temperature seems stable now, and it's given us hot air, which it wasn't. Yeah, I think we're going to uh, risk it for a biscuit. We good? I don't know about that, but... Is it possible it's fractured because we have an overheating problem? Unlikely. You think it's the other way around? Like, that's good that's because it broken, means... I would say that that is your problem. That's cracked. The pipe's pulled off. Coolant's dumped everywhere. Twice. Was, yeah, twice, <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't realise that that was broken first yeah. time. I should have looked harder but we were on the side of a hill and I was a bit we, panicking. We were on the steepest hill ever, yeah. That's, we couldn't have stayed there. Coach, no. There's like tourist coaches going around <laughs> us and things. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a mechanic, not by any stretch. But you do alright love. Yeah, but that to me is, is a bit of metal that's fractured and that's caused all the problems. I mean the problem we've got now is with barely any coolant in there, it's mostly mineral water which isn't good but We'll find a garage and get some uh, coolant and uh, I'll drain it out and switch it over. On the assumption it doesn't empty itself. Are we holding? A couple of miles down the road. Yeah. Right. So there we go. On. on the plus side, I can speed up this now. So they measure you when you're coming in and then when you're leaving the toll road. Yeah. <laughs> we've been, we've been sat here Good for speed minutes, there. So, yeah. Look, off the curb. Yep. So I'm not the floor. Yep. And we're good. It's a bit warm, isn't it, love? Done. 
uh, we went from Walida to Casablanca, which was a fairly long stretch, 103 dirham, which is about £8, I think. Definitely worth it. The motorways are easy, smooth, and really, that was just really simple. So you definitely need cash for the tolls, but yeah, they're all manned, so I give him a 200 dirham note, and he gave me some change. Really, really simple, perfect. And of course, we've done a big long run in the van now because uh, right at the start of this toll road was when Stu replaced the clip with the Jubilee clip. So, uh, yeah, I'll let him tell you. <laughs> How are we doing, darling? Yeah, I think the temporary repair has done the job. Uh, yeah, see, so we've done a good hour, hour and a half on the road, sat at 100 kilometres an hour on the cruise control. I've been keeping an eye on the uh, on-screen display with the temperature and it's exactly where it should be hasn't moved we even stopped for coffee and caffeine just a minute ago and i checked the tank uh, and we're not losing any any coolant so uh, yeah hopefully that's the last of it i mean of all the things that could have gone wrong a broken metal clip is probably the easiest thing to replace i had visions of a pipe splitting and us having to source a new uh, new coolant pipe which would have been a bloody nightmare in the middle of nowhere, which is essentially where we were. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed, she's behaving herself. Good old Merc. <laughs> so there's us. We've just pulled into Camp in Mahami, Mahami D. Oh, I can't say it. So this is us. Stu's just moving because they said the pitch isn't suitable. But we've just arrived at Mohammadi Mohammed Ma, I don't know. Mohammed Mohammedia. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? So, there we go. This is us. We've just arrived at Camp in Mohammedia and the gentleman's just said that the pitch we we're on is no good for our van it's only a caravan pitch so they want us to move around the other side unfortunately we've arrived at sunset and it's iftar time and everybody's doing that thing like the whole of morocco just grinds to a stop at sunset during ramadan which is totally understandable because people are hungry and thirsty so we were hoping to walk down to the beach to catch the sunset so um but i think we might have missed it now but i'm gonna keep walking anyway and so you can catch us up i've just got the dog here which is why i'm toodling along uh, it's very very busy here so you can see all the rows of motorhomes up and that's Mahreb, which is the last prayer before sunset so i think we will miss the sunset if you can hear the call to prayer there but always a nice sound I'm gonna miss it when we go home and yes we missed the sunset unfortunately because we had to move pitch you see the lovely pink sky behind me and yeah that was the final call to prayer for the day which indicates that the sun has set so it's a bit crazy driving at kind of sunset time because everybody's rushing to get home and people have not a drink or food all day and I think it clouds people's decisions and decision making a little bit and everybody drives a little bit crazier and I think they just tear down the road cut in front of you and they're like if I die I die because I'm starving inshallah <laughs> I wish I could say all of that in Arabic because we've got lots of uh, Moroccan followers. So it's very pretty here. What lovely, lovely little beach. Very nice. Oh, what a long ass day that's been, love. Yes, it has been a very long day. <laughs> uh, hopefully, the van's all right. It's behaved itself. And um, we can enjoy a couple of days just chilling out here. I could do without any more stress to be honest <laughs> <laughs> and with that in mind this is where we leave you this week thanks again for all your support oh spoiler alert it gets worse next week but you'll have to tune in next Sunday at 7.30 to find out how